All right, a good day to all. Uh, Sam here with you. We are, um, well, it's late morning on a Tuesday, February 27th. And uh, by request from, uh, from my members, we're going to take a look at Bitcoin and uh, do a bit of an update as we've had some, you know, some interesting developments here. We're not completely in the clear. But, um, you know, enough to be encouraged by some of the price action that we saw over uh, the last couple of days. So let, let's take a look at here. Now, I've got this is the uh, eight hour on Bitstamp. Now, we're going to look at it on Bitstamp and on GDAX. But I'm starting on Bitstamp. I've been using this as a reference, kind of a baseline chart uh, through most of the Bitcoin videos that I've done. It just happens to be where I'm trading it. You know, a lot of liquidity here. I just like this exchange. But nonetheless, so as I've uh, shown m multiple times now, we're, we're, we're working off of the assumption that we have a good pivot here. And we're trying to get this into a good, clean five wave. And it's part of what's made it problematic is we did not have a clear one wave. It's, yeah, you can get a, you can get a count in there, but it's a little, just enough to give you pause. Now coming here now again, it's you know it's it's not textbook, right? But rare, rarely is our things uh, completely textbook. So there's a little you know deductive reasoning that has to be applied here, a little bit of just letting the market reveal itself as it, as it moves. So if, if we look here, we we can certainly make a case that that we're working into an, an impulsive wave here, that we'd have a five wave structure. We did not overlap the one, so that that's all positive. It's, a, it's the shallowness, the shallowness of the two, slightly, you know, disconcerting. You'd like to see that go deeper, just to stay with the probability, you know, map of where tip, uh, typically we'd see a wave two. But we get the three a two, you know, it's it's not it's not like it never happens. It's just not the norm would be, of course, the fifty to the six one eight. But a three a two, it's approximately twelve percent of the time. So it could just be implying strength in the market and impatience here. So from here, we you know we, we're two and through the two uh, first algo targets. So that would imply that perhaps we've got an Elliott count underway. So if I take this off, and we start looking at this, well. You know what? What can we deduce from this? If we're going to go into a complete five wave, and we we cannot assume that just yet, we we got to get this to give us a, a new high here, so we can go continue this series of higher high, higher high, higher high, and then higher low, higher low. So we're not there yet, but we're with the good signs along the way. So some reasonable targets as we look at that. Well, of course, the first one we'd look at would be the length of the third wave. So I'd measure from the low of the two to the high of the three. And interestingly, or not, or perhaps just as you would expect, we go right into the golden zone and we get the reaction. So here's that algo target, first algo target here. Negative 20, 3, 6 at 1270. Uh, what about 12, 12, uh, 12, 7, 4, 1 reasonable that that would complete the five wave structure and give us much more encouragement on the validity of this as a hard low that, that being our our corrective low is in we've gone into a five wave structure that would be very encouraging to bulls now additionally you know this this is encouraging here that algo is defended and we did not overlap the one so very technical additionally though since we're working on the idea that we may have an elliott count in here we we would look for some typical wave five targets so one of the most common would be the length of the one projected from the four get that right on there and here's the 100 percent so here, here was the 618, so two and through now if we're going to get that we what, what, what we get is a nice little confluence zone here so we, we've got the algo target and we've got the 100% giving us an, a, a nice juicy target there for a fifth. Now, just because we have that target there and that these are high probability zones doesn't mean we must go here and that we will pivot. Does not, does not guarantee that we're going to do that and come down. But that's a reasonable target if you're long and you're looking for, if nothing else, an area to tighten up your stop, reduce some risk, you know, all the things that you might consider as you're approaching a target. You know that that's an area you certainly would want to pay attention to, and that's from we'll call it twelve five, you know twelve twelve four ish to twelve seven forty. You know you've got a nice nice target there, and that that would confirm our five wave count, which would imply that on the larger degree we'd have a one wave in, anticipating a two to come. 
So encouraging for bulls. And yet again, as I, as I would remind you, nothing says we must stop there. So what's going to affect that in terms of the resistance that we're likely to run into? Well, now that we have that wicked off. Let's take some of this off and consider the other side of it. So coming back up, we know where there's going to be resistance. There'll be algos written to sell on the way up at the 50. So what have we done so far? Here was the first reaction at the 50, rejected. Now here's what sets us up for the fifth. We come down here and it, it, you know there, there was some question mark as to whether or not we were gonna get that fifth or we were just gonna go start heading down here and we'd have either an A wave or an ABC here to suggest that it was corrective because as you can see here, we are still internal. We're still internal from this swing to this swing. Okay, until we, until we get beyond that, we stay internal. So how, how, you know, how can we get beyond there? What's a reasonable roadmap to, to give us a, a path to taking out this upper resistance? Well, interestingly, right, as you note here, just from swing high to swing low, we can see where our target zone is in conjunction with the, the golden zone on the way back up. So this, this is going to be a substantial bit of resistance. Now, if we fatten that up a little bit to get through. Now, now we get the 65 at 13,282. Stiff resistance, no question you're gonna run into selling there. So if you're long, if you were a buyer here and you're looking for you know, targets, well, well, there's a big fat one. Now, additionally, right, because we have to consider it, we can't just ignore it, we, we gotta go to the all the way, all right, high to low. Well, where does that put us? Well, there's the 50 right there. So we're getting a, a big confluence zone here that would suggest that we've got a target and some reasonable expectation that we're going to get a reaction there. Well, if we complete there, if we complete this five wave, well, just again, hypothetically, if we complete there, oh, come here, I can get this thing hot. Oh, sorry. Let's try that again. Okay, I want a fib tool. If we complete up here at this 50 and this confluence zone here, well, the expectation is that we're going to come down now and put in a second wave. Second wave between the 50 and the 618, that's our high probability zone. That would put us between 9,400 and 8,585. So we've got a clear target there. So if you were long, you know, again, that's a place where you've got to make your own decision about whether you want to you know, fully, you know, get, get out of the Bitcoin longs or reduce your exposure or, you know, trail a stop or, you know, you, you've got some choices you have to make there on the expectation that you're, you're likely to see a reaction there. Now, that doesn't kill the bullish count because all, all that does is set us up for a one, two, and then the big move up to get us, to, you know, off now to break this resistance. We'd have it all in place. We'd have the one, we'd look for that, you know, that telltale three wave correction here, because now we'd be looking for a correction of this swing. Again, now I'm hypothetical here, but if we, t if we top here in this area for a fifth, and we, go, we look at that swing, swing low to high, now we're, we're retracing that, looking for an internal correction to that completed five wave. Do we come down in three and get a zone where we you know, can be looking to be a buyer to get the, the, the third wave, which is the big wave? Can, can we get position there? Now, this is only this is just hypothetical, thus dashed lines. But can we get that, come down in a three? This is the next big opportunity to be a buyer if you're going to work off of the larger time frame for that. You know, that's waiting for this to complete. Now, you may not want to wait that long, and nothing says that you have to. Because if we look here, based on where we are sitting now at 10.5, you know, there, there's got to be some, you know, there's some good juice there from 10.5 if we retrace this a little bit up to these upper targets. I'm just going to be rounding here. I'll call it 1300 so we've got a $3,000 swing there if we're going to complete. So in order to participate in that and look for some opportunities there, of course, we're going to go down to a smaller time frame. But, you know, there's the larger degree roadmap for bulls that sets up quite nicely. All looking good. All working off of this is our hard pivot. So let's now go over to, uh, let's go down to a one hour and I'm going to switch switch exchanges here. Actually, what I've got here is a 30 minute, which I, I like to use a lot of. So we hit, we're, I'm now I'm on the 30 minute here and we're, we're digging into a little more detail here. So this is on GDAX, 30 minute on GDAX. And I, we've been, we've used this chart before. So here here's the correction that we've been dealing with that you know, this has just been characteristic of crypto. We've, we're seeing these shallow C waves here. And you can see we don't even make the 618. Length of the A wave projected from the B, we get, we get this five wave structure down here. And essentially it's, 
you know we get a fresh low, but you know you might look at that as a, a bit of a double bottom. We don't we don't get to the to the six one eight, which is a common target for the C. So again, is that you know, strength of the market? Is it the is it the impatience of of, of bulls here? Whatever it is, it's it's been very characteristic, and we've seen it. We saw it throughout all of 2017 these shallow C waves, and it looks like we're getting it again here. So moving off of that, you know, and that was a that was a bit of a question mark. You know, it was very reasonable to be anticipating. You see, I had the zones marked down here. It was very reasonable to anticipate that we do a more traditional. A, B, C, and come down to at least 100% the length of the A wave projected from the B. So thus the hot box down here, right at the 618. No, we don't get it. You know, and off we go into a five wave. So where's the where's the opportunity for a swing trader, you know, willing to work down on some of these smaller time frames? Well, you can see we've gone up here and we've moved in a five wave structure. So we have an impulsive move off of this low. So here's the B, we come down in five, complete the C. And now we've moved away from five, so we go five into five, implying the C and the one. So we, we here we now we're just starting to get on the other side of this little channel here. Let me take this off so I can open up the chart, and you can see how nicely this is shaped up here. I'm going to take this off just to not confuse us. Okay, so here one, two, three, four, five doesn't get any prettier than that. I, you know, I, I don't know how anyone can argue that there's that Elliott wave is just silliness. It, I, you know that, that's as that's as clear as it can be. You know, and you even got good subdivision here. You can see in this fifth, we get a nice five wave sequence there as well. So, nice, pretty, f impulsive wave coming off of that C low. Right. This was the tricky part. This is clear as a bell. So, what are we looking for? Well, just like any five wave, whether we're looking at an eight hour, a daily, a weekly, or a one minute, we're looking for that high probability zone for the second here between the fifty and the six one eight. Right, it's nothing more than that. It's the it's the highest probability zone to look for it. Does it? We don't always get it, right? Was we looked when we when we started the second wave and the move off the low only hit the 38. So you know that's there. We need to be conscious of that. But it's not the high probability trade. So what what we want to see is this come down here and and create the opportunity for us to buy in that zone, looking for well here's our first target. Now that would not be rel that would not be a target relative to an Elliott wave count. That's the just the straight fib pull with algo targets applied. Now we know that if we're going to get a third wave structure out of that, if we're going to get a five wave and we're going to do a one two into a three, we know that the negative one hundred will be very close to the one, to the one six one eight. 175 window, as I've shown you many times. Now, again, I'm hypothetical here, but if I go to my alternate tool, alternate price projection tool, length of the one, and we, we, you know, we don't know for sure that that one is in, but it certainly is implied by the by the uh, price action that we're seeing. If that's our one, and we're going to come down here into this window, I'm, I'll just split the difference between the 50 and the 618. Again, hypothetical. Well, where's the the high probability zone for our third? Right up here, right. So here's the one six one eight one seven five window, right here, right in conjunction with the negative one hundred. So as I often tell you, the point of having the negative one hundred up here, these are the algo targets, but it gives you just an eyeball reference. So you don't necessarily have to go back and draw draw the alternate price projections. So I think it's a good habit to get into, just you know, particularly if you're just learning this stuff. So there, there's your roadmap here now in the smaller time frame. So if you're looking to get into that, as, as you'll recall from uh, just looking at the at the eight hour, we knew we had that pocket up here, a little bit higher, of 13, we'll call it 13-ish, you know, if I'm rounding there. So here, here's a roadmap that would get us there, that would be consistent with what we're seeing on the smaller time frames. Now, can we get that to play? Well, we shall see, but it certainly is off to a good start. So here, here now we're working from this as our hard pivot. So here's the swing, here's the correction, stays internal, swing high to low, as long as we stay internal. And if we come down here in an ABC, if we get a little three wave, that's what we're looking for. Can we get a nice three wave subdivision there? That that all adds credibility to this this potential roadmap. Take this up a degree or two. All right? Can we get that ABC? Then that's a that's a must take. It's just you, you got to take that trade. There it is, set up. You know, it's it's all there. So you've got you've got the trend established on the larger degree as we started on the eight hour. We're down here to a 30 minute. You've got the tell here, which is the move off the pivot in five. We get a nice little three wave. That's a must take. 
So think of it this way. We, we, if, if we come down into this zone, you, 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 you've got a target up here. There's the 1618, negative 100. And, and we'd be on just on the other side of the 65. That's 15.5 to 1. Yeah, I mean, you, you have to take that trade. I mean, if you don't take that trade, I don't know what you're looking for. Maybe you're just a you know a raging bear, and you just you don't you don't buy in any of this. I don't know how you don't take that trade, right? If, and if you follow me, you know that again, as I'll often say, why would you not take that unless you're just wildly bullish? But you know you're, you'd be you'd be you're going against what the chart is just screaming at you, right? Impulsive wave here, new trend, higher high, you know, you can throw out the Elliott wave if you don't like it. What have I got there? A series of higher highs and higher lows that defines a trend. I'm, I'm looking to correct that, right? Maybe it's some profit taking here. For whatever reason, it tends to correct, as we've seen in God knows how many tens of hundreds of millions of, of wave counts, Fives and threes, right? You can simplify it. Fives and threes, fives and threes. Now, they, they don't, that doesn't make, mean that it's easy. So, I mean, there was lots of complexity in here that was difficult to get a handle on. But eventually, you, you get something where you say, I can work with that. Okay, I can get probability that I can work with here. Doesn't mean that you're going to have a winning trade. It just means that you have an intelligent trade. Sometimes a very well thought out, well calculated trade with all the right risk reward you're going to get stopped out, right? And probably more often than not. So you just, you can't be afraid of it. You, you, you let the thing set up and take the trade. Put a stop on it and, and move, then go look for the next trade. It, it's just, it doesn't need to be, you know, this this fretting and nervousness and oh my God, you know, it's it's just, if you're going to be a trader, that's that's your job right there to take that trade. That, that That's your job. Right? And, but the, the key to your job is to make sure that you don't do something stupid like that because you're just wildly bullish. Now, well, now what's my risk reward? 1.72 to 1. Oh, well, you know, I'm going to give it plenty of room. Mm -mm. Your, your job is to, def once you're in the trade, is to make sure that you don't get hurt by that trade. That's what separates pros from amateurs. And amateurs, mm, you know, I'm still bullish. You know, I'm, I'm a holder. You know, I'm just, I'm staying long here. And then, you know, all of a sudden you're, you're deep in trouble. And you're screwed because you 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 know digging out of the hole that you create for yourself is almost impossible. You know once you, once you do substantial damage to your account, you know you, you're you're not that it hasn't been done before, but more than likely you're going to need to replenish your account. So why put yourself in that position? I, you know if if you put alarms on it, right? So if you're worried about the stop getting filled, put alerts on it. Alert, 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 alert. So that if nothing else, you know that. You know, it's a bitch if you're, you know, if it's happening in the overnight, right? That, I mean, that's just the reality of it. It's 24-7, so there are times when you're just not going to be there to be sure that that stop gets filled. But, you know, that unfortunately, that's just the reality of where we are with crypto is that occasionally stops are not, are not, are not triggered. It's, that's going to change. If, if crypto is going to evolve and compete with all the other asset classes, we have to get past this point where you're, you know, wondering, hoping, I hope my stop gets filled. That, that's coming. It's, we'll get there. You know, it's it's the exception rather than the rule now that stops are not getting filled, but it's got to be, it, it can't be a question mark in your mind. Stops need to get filled. So I, not, not to digress too much, but that, that's, that we'll get there. We're not quite there yet, but we will get there. But if nothing else, you know, at least you want to know about this best you can. If you have to put your... You know, your cell phone by your bed and have it go off if you know if, if, if your if your alert gets hit you know you can do it you can do it in trading view you can have it send you a text when it when its trigger gets hit you know if it's three in the morning you know shit you know what are you gonna do you got to get up and get you know make sure your stop is filled make sure you're out of the trade if you're worried about it it's the reality of where we are with crypto right now I wish that weren't the case it will get better I'm, I have no doubt about it because it's just bad for business if stops are not getting filled Anyway, there, so th there we have it. There, the clear tell here with the five. Do we get a three? Must take trade. If we get in that pocket, you got to take it. Place your stop. Got a target. You know, welcome to trading. That's your job. All right, guys.